Hi, this is Nanette Hosenfeld with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Tuesday, August 22nd, 2017. Taking a look at fire potential impacts over the next few days, um, today we will see showers and thunderstorms across much of the Great Basin, with the potential for some drier thunderstorms across the northern uh, portions of Utah and Nevada. As we move into Wednesday, uh, the threat increases across Idaho as moisture shifts north. Uh, the greatest potential for dry thunderstorms is across the red, the red highlighted area in Idaho. Uh, moving a little further south where the moisture is deeper, uh, you can see the yellow highlighted area is where there is the forecast for a mix of wet and dry thunderstorms. Um, and then the remainder of the Great Basin could see uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon, uh, especially over the higher terrain. As we move into Thursday, there could be some lingering showers and thunderstorms across the higher terrain of central Idaho, but the main concern is the potential for some dry, gusty winds across uh, central and southern Idaho. Uh, these wind speeds will generally be in the 15 to 30 mile an hour range, but they are of concern because they are following um, a day of lightning in an area with uh, really dry fuels. Over the past 24 hours, there was quite a bit of precipitation across the southern half of the Great Basin, with the greatest accumulations across southwestern Utah. Uh, you can see from the lightning map on the right that there was quite a bit of lightning associated with these storms, um, especially those storms in central and southern Utah. Over the past 14 days, precipitation has been below normal across the majority of the Great Basin. If we look past 30 days, you can see uh, the monsoonal moisture across the south uh, that uh, put much of the southern areas at or above normal, uh, but really the past two weeks have dried out quite a bit, bit particularly across the south. ERCs are highest across the northern portions of the Great Basin. Uh, you can see the point map on the left shows much of those areas in the uh, reds and the oranges. And it's kind of interesting to look how the average is out as far as PSA. Uh, the map on the right shows uh, that broken down by a predictive service area. And you can see that those uh, central Idaho zones really are looking at the highest ERCs in the Great Basin. I'm looking at those in a little more detail, uh, you can see in GB1 how those ERCs have recovered quite quickly from the cooler weather that we saw about a week ago. And looking at GB5, uh, those uh, ERCs are rebounding there as well. Live fuel moistures are on the decline across much of the Great Basin. Uh, the top two graphs on the right show the 1,000 hour fuel moisture. Uh, these are in areas that we're expecting to see a mix of wet and dry lightning over the next uh, two days. And you can see how those 1,000 hour fuels um, are pretty well below normal. Um, for those portions of Idaho. And then moving into Nevada, you can see that uh, the sagebrush is not quite as dry with uh, readings right around normal for the time of year. Uh, this is a pretty cool image from yesterday's solar eclipse. You can see uh, the shadow of the moon making its way across the United States uh, as that eclipse occurred yesterday. And taking a look at the current uh, weather satellite, you can see uh, these white colors across the central part of the Great Basin denote moisture in place. Um, and that's largely where we're expecting to see showers and thunderstorms develop this afternoon uh, with that moisture in place. And that is the moisture that will shift northward uh, tomorrow and bring the showers and thunderstorms to portions of Idaho. So looking in a little more detail at the general weather pattern, uh, again you can see little green uh, specks on the map here show that moisture that's in place across the Great Basin. Uh, we're under a larger high pressure ridge. And for today, uh, significant fire potential is uh, highest across uh, Idaho where conditions are the driest. Winds this afternoon will be quite light, as you can see from the forecast map on the left, generally below 15 miles an hour across much of the Great Basin. And looking at this uh, map on the right, you can see where showers and thunderstorms are expected across the Great Basin. Uh, these storms will mostly be wet, although there is a potential for some drier storms on the northern fringe of where these are forecasted to develop. As we move into Wednesday, uh, that moisture does shift north. You can see uh, some more greens across portions of Idaho. And tomorrow is a day that we are quite concerned about the potential for um, dry lightning. Uh, these are areas that have the areas that are highlighted on the on the map here on the right are areas that have the highest ERCs with the driest fuels. And so there is concern uh, for the impact that storms will have there. Uh, looking in a little more detail at the weather for Wednesday, again, this map on the right shows highlighted in green where those storms are expected to develop. Uh, you can see much of the northern half of the Great Basin will see storms develop tomorrow afternoon. But again, the main concern is across those portions of Idaho and northeastern Nevada where the fields are driest and it looks like the storms have the potential to uh, have some dry lightning mixed in. 
the wind gust forecast is here on the left and you can see uh, for the most part pretty light winds again across the Great Basin on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, uh, the concern shifts to wind as a cold front makes its way through the area. We will see some gusty winds on Thursday, and we are highlighting much of Idaho uh, with a concern with those gusty winds on Thursday following the lightning on Wednesday. Wind speeds will generally be in the 15 to 25, 30 mile an hour range uh, with the strongest winds across southeastern Idaho on Thursday. Uh, there will be some lingering moisture on Thursday and so there is a potential for some showers and thunderstorms to continue across the higher elevations of Idaho on Thursday. So looking at precipitation over the next three days, uh, most of the precipitation will uh, occur across the northern part of the Great Basin, though some precipitation is expected along the higher terrain of central and southern Utah over the next three days. As we move into Friday, uh, moisture remains in place, though it's... As we move into Friday, uh, the moisture will continue to make its way out of the area. We could see some residual uh, showers and thunderstorms across uh, the eastern, northeastern portions of the Great Basin on Friday, though coverage is expected to be quite limited. As we move into Saturday, you can see some of that drier air making its way into the western part of the Great Basin. Uh, winds will be quite light, uh, temperatures near normal on Saturday, and so we're not looking at really any significant fire potential impacts on Saturday. As we move into Sunday, that drier air continues to make its way into the Great Basin, and so you can see in the map on the right, uh, we are expecting fuels to continue to dry into Sunday, and that trend continues into Monday with uh, dry air in place across much of the Great Basin. Over the next seven days, uh, precipitation will be focused across the northern part of the Great Basin, with the majority of that falling in the first uh, three days of the period. Finally, in the 8-14 to 14 day period, the Climate Prediction Center is calling for hot conditions above normal conditions across the entire Great Basin, with below normal precipitation across the northern part of our area. So that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Our information is on the screen, and you can also find us on Twitter. Thanks.